I've struggled with depression and anxiety the majority of my life. The last few years, I've been able to get a handle on it. And although I occasionally do get anxious or depressed, uh, it's not clinical, it's not my way of life. So today I wanna to share five things I've learned about anxiety and depression. We'll get into the five things I wish I personally knew about depression and anxiety in just a second. But first, my name is Melissa. I am a mindfulness coach. If you're into mindfulness and personal growth and development in a down-to-earth, not too woo-woo type of way, please subscribe to the channel. Let's get to it. Thing number one, most people are not going to understand. The important thing to realize is this doesn't have anything to do with you. It doesn't mean you're fatally flawed. It means that unless you have lived with an illness like clinical depression or an anxiety disorder, there's absolutely no way you can understand. You may sympathize, you may even empathize, but eventually people tend to get frustrated, burnt out, and disconnect from the depressed or anxious person. And then because we're depressed and or anxious, we tend to personalize them walking away or pulling away and use it as more evidence that there's something wrong with us. The truth of the matter is you only know what you know. Most people are good people and they'd like to help. They want you to be better, but they don't know what to do. And that's okay. And truthfully, don't blame yourself and don't blame them. It's not personal. Thing number two that I wish I knew about anxiety and depression. If it's not situational anxiety or depression, there actually may be an underlying cause. For me, it was twofold. I didn't find out till I was about 30 that I was born with a genetic uh, condition that has to do with my adrenal gland. My body produces too much adrenaline. So I'm pretty much constantly in a state of fight or flight. Then it was compounded by an autoimmune disease. The autoimmune disease made my stress hormones go absolutely bonkers and an already anxious person was made even more anxious and depressed. So the first thing I recommend if you've been suffering with anxiety and depression for a long time and it's not based on your current circumstance, get a full blood workup from a doctor. I say go to a functional doctor who can spend a lot of time with you, dig deep into what's going on and make adjustments, lifestyle, stress management, supplements, diet, sleep. These were all monumental for me in turning my life around. Thing number three I wish I knew about anxiety and depression is at some point you do have a choice. Now hear me out, I hated when people said this because for a very, very, very long time, I didn't have a choice. Uh, my body, my hormones, everything was running the show. So if your body and your hormone and your fight and flight response is driving the bus, no, you don't have a, you don't have a choice to pull the brakes. Here's where the choice comes in and it's twofold. First, you can choose to do an intervention on your body, find out what's going on and take appropriate steps in the things I mentioned earlier, lifestyle changes, dietary changes, supplement changes. So you get your body and mind basically to a factory reboot. And then part two of the choosing is realizing just because you have an initial response to something doesn't mean you have to act on the response. So you have the mental response, you have the physical response, you do not need to react. That's where the choice comes in. You can acknowledge it, the thing that's causing you anxiety, the thing that's making you depressed. You can note it and you can let it go. I talk a lot about that uh, in other videos and in my book, Mindfulness for People Who Suck at Being Mindful. Thing number four, I wish I knew about anxiety and depression. It builds upon itself. So if you are already seeing things through a lens of anxiousness and despair and despondency, you may not be interpreting everything around you, people's actions, outside stimulus correctly. You're already viewing life from a kind of uh, depleted place. And once you're looking through that lens, you're just gonna find more and more evidence to confirm how you're already seeing things. The ego, 
doesn't like to be challenged. So if you're seeing things a certain way, your ego is going to search out validation and verification for the way you're thinking. And it's not necessarily true. And the fifth thing I wish I knew about depression and anxiety is there is no shame in getting professional help. Do it. Do it, do it, do it. It'll be the best thing you've ever done. But not every type of therapy and not every therapist is appropriate for everyone. So it's kind of like dating. You may have to try out a bunch of different people. You may have to try out a bunch of different types of therapy. There's talk therapy, there's group therapy, there's mindfulness uh, coaching. There is, there's so, so, believe me, (laughs) I pretty much tried them all. So if you have any questions, let me know below. (laughs) I firmly believe that if you're clinically depressed or have an anxiety disorder or not, you should be seeing a therapist. I think everybody should. I think it's something that everyone can benefit from and there is no shame. There shouldn't be a stigma. Just do it. It'll be the best thing you can do for yourself. And bonus number six, pets make everything better. Right? Right. I hope you found these five things helpful. Uh, If you do, please subscribe to my channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Comment below on this video or videos you'd like to see in the future. And if you have the chance, pick up my book, Mindfulness for People Who Suck at Being Mindful. Subscribe to the blog, amaximizedlife.com. On YouTube, A Maximized Life. On Instagram, a.maximized.life. And on Twitter, at DJ Melissa Max.